Hey everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking, uh, coming to you uh, live from my gaming dojo. Uh, well, it's actually live. What am I talking about live? <laughs> but I'm coming to you from my gaming dojo, and I'm here to uh, review yet another game for you. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, the game today is a game called, uh, it's like the Amdeville Project Phobos or something, but my, my, my rules must be an older uh, version, so I just call the game Phobos. That's what my rules are called. But I know it's called like the Amdeville Asylum Project or something like that. I do apologize. But you, when you see the video name, you'll actually know what the name of the game is. I, I just It's escaping me right now. Um, Phobos is a game uh, that pits uh, two to four players uh, against each other. Uh, each person represents an investigator, if you will, uh, that is uh, looking in, like, going through the Arkham Asylum. And each person, strangely enough, is like, I'm guessing, I, I apologize, I don't exactly know the theme, but I mean, my, my understanding is that each person is kind of like a paranormal investigator type of person. Uh, that, um has uh, some irrational fears, each person does, but they also have um, this, these cadre of ghosts that are working for them. And um, they are all investigating this, this, this asylum, this, this spooky, like, rundown asylum. I mean, can you think of a spookier place? You know, in actuality, um, as an aside, and I'll do this really quickly, I know I, I branch off a lot, um, there actually is, like, a, an abandoned um, asylum uh, that is, like, within like 60 miles or so of where I live and um, ghost hunters go there like all the time and they take pictures and of course like blurry lights or something like that and there it's a ghost you know so but it's kind of cool I mean I, I I've been there and I it is uh, spooky as heck so but regardless um so uh this game is like each person you're, you're you're investigating or you're just basically you're you're within this 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 asylum and uh you are all trying to use your ghosts and use your powers to reveal the other people's fears and thereby knocking them out of the game. Um, and uh, you use your ghosts to protect your own fears from being uh, found, and you also use your ghosts to uh, knock down the defenses of the other players, the other ghosts, uh, to, um, you know, basically reveal their their fears and allow you to uh, you know defeat them so uh, there you have it. it it's kind of a nice little spooky theme uh, to the game and um, and I, I'm kind of sad that I, I didn't have this really before Halloween I got it like right before Halloween and um, you know I, I hadn't played it enough for me to really include this uh, in uh, my, my my Halloween spooky game uh, list that I did a, a little while ago um, but and let's be honest. I, I mean, it's a Kickstarter game, and, and so like the pro, it's a prototype version. So um, it may not have really fit really well. But um, I'm guessing that once this game comes out, I guess it's going to have some awesome miniatures and look really cool and what have you. And so I think this would definitely be uh, an entry into Spooky Game Night for me. But regardless, let me show you how to play Phobos, and then we'll come back here where I'm sitting right now, and I'll tell you exactly what I think of the game. And then uh, that'll be that, as it always is. So uh, here we go. Uh, how to play uh, the Amityville Asylum Project Phobos is your fear something game. <laughs> All right. And I apologize uh, to publisher, designer. I'm, I'm just having some fun. So here we go. All right. I have set up a three-player game of Phobos. Um, as, as with any like Kickstarter, uh, this is uh, the print and play uh, version of it. Um, so like this isn't actual like the the end components. You can see like the game tiles are, are pieces of paper as with the player boards and what have you. So whereas I think the art um, is going to be very close to what you see in front of you, uh, I, I, I can't guarantee that. And obviously, like, as far as, uh, you know, like, I don't think um, you're going to have these, like, well, while cute, I think the meeples will be a little different in the game because those are representing your ghosts. But I, like I said, I do know, like, the game is going to have tons of miniatures. They're going to look really awesome, really cool. So, and obviously, I don't have those, so I can't really show those off. But anyway, um... This is a game, as I said, it, 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 these will be tiles that you set up. Uh, these four tiles in the middle, those are the, like, uh, the, the halls of, of the, the asylum that you are, you are investigating or you're, you're mucking about in. And then uh, all these around the outside are representations of the different fears uh, that are haunting uh, your, your players that you have. And each player has uh, three random fears uh, that uh, they uh, 
you know, will cause them to go insane or run fleeing from the, the asylum or what have you. And that's different each and every time. And you determine that uh, by randomly uh, dealing out um, three of these cards, uh, and each person gets three. And you can see, like, you know, fear of insects and stuff like that. And so you get those three. And then the actual, like, cards, like, here is uh, Colrophobia, the fear of clowns. You can see there is a representation here, um, like this, this tile here uh, is a representation uh, of that fear, and you can see those there. And then there's those spots there. Now, when I explain the gameplay, you'll you'll further understand that here in just a few moments. Um, I have a three-player game, so I'm just going to show you like the, the fourth uh, player card, just so you can see what these look like. Um, you have the person that it represents over here, and you can see there's all these like symbols uh, of the different things. And here's the different fears. And you see that there's these these different symbols on these locations, and and you might be wondering what those are for. And those are used by the action cards. And I'll show you like I will be when I show you the gameplay, you'll see that. But you can notice that um, each of the fears is represented uh, by those locations, and you can see that these are represented by these different columns. And when you draw action cards and you play action cards, um, there are symbols that will tell you that you need to place tokens either in one of these columns or in one of these four little spots like this. So it's uh, pretty straightforward, and these aren't the same for each for each each card. I mean, these these are um, different. So each person will have a slightly different card, but the, the, it remains, you know, theoretically the same. You know, as far as like the the symbols are the same, and the and the 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 fears and stuff are the same. But these symbols on each uh, each player card will be slightly different. Um, so when you begin the game, uh, you will get three action cards, and these are action cards. And the action cards consist of uh, three locations. Uh, you have the top here, this crown, and then in the middle, there's you know there's these three symbols. And those three symbols will tell you exactly um, what you have to do on a turn. All right. So uh, as with any game, you determine the first player. Each person will have, as I said, three fears. And your goal is that you have to prevent um, tokens to be being placed on your player card to represent your fear. So if um, like you had the fear of clowns, like I showed you just a moment, you don't want anybody to ever, including yourself, to ever put uh, one of these tokens that you'll be placing. These are just, these will obviously be cardboard uh, when the game begins. And the, and the number there is important. It, it determines after you place a token down, how many movement points you get to move your ghosts about on the board, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So if you have fear of ghosts, you never want anybody to cover up the ghost unless you're currently protecting uh, that fear on the board, which I'll explain also in just a moment. Hey, don't you love when I'm like telling you how to play the game and I'm always saying, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. So just kind of catalog what I just said and then we'll move forward and hopefully this will uh, click for you here in a moment. And this is one of those games that like, that, like it's, it's like a lot of games. Like the first time you read the rules, you're like, wow, and then you actually play it and you're like, ah, so the game actually clicks along pretty well. So uh, you have these three cards, like I said, and if, say, like, this person was going, green was going, and then you can see that they have this this token of the, of the crown up here, and then this, like, this uh, this weird, like, kind of puzzle shape, and, and there's this, like, uh, I, you know, it looks like it's a one, two, three, like, a contest or something like that. I, I you know, I can look at the rules, and I can tell you exactly what they are, but I, I've since forgotten what each one is. I just go by the the picture, which is really cool because this game isn't really language dependent. It's all just pictures, so you don't really have to worry about like translations or anything like that. But regardless, um, so here I'll just move these off for a second here. So the first thing that this player will have to do is they have to take one of their tokens and they have to place it on a crown. So if you look at the player card, you can see there's the crowns here. So they have to pick one of these four fears to place a token on their own uh, card. Now, it's important to note, and this is something you have to be pay attention to, that this arrow tells you that after you do that, you're gonna be able to take one of your tokens that's on uh, this corresponding row, so that would be this row here, and you're gonna be able to move it and place it on the other person's board over there. So the smart player would take a look, and as long as they didn't have the fear of uh, fear of needles or the fear of guns, they would take one of their tokens, and they'd just be able to take one. And, and these numbers have either one, two, or three, and that's the number of movement points you're gonna get for placing that. You only get the movement points the first time that you place the token down. You never get to get them again. 
uh, by moving it or anything like that. So if they took that and they like they didn't have fear of guns, they go ahead and they place that right there, like so. And the second thing, uh, as I said, is going to be that they're going to move that token to the other board. So now I'm going to have to grab that other board, and you have to follow along uh, with what the, the 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 card says. So it has to go on that symbol. So here, let me just uh, do my best here to, and the flowers are still standing. Uh, okay, so if you know if you know what that's from, just kudos to you. But anyway, so we find that symbol. Here's that symbol there, and they're going to be able to take this token, and they're going to look, and they're going to say, well. You know, and this is when, like, those, if you ever played Clue, this is where your deduction's gonna go. So, like, if you have the card of flying in your hand, like, you have Fear of Flying, then you know it can't be that. So you're gonna, like, pick one. And you're gonna say, uh, Fear of Death here, that little gravestone. And you put that over there. And what'll happen is, if, if that player has the Fear of Death card, they would then have to reveal that and they, they lose one of their three cards. And that's how you win the game. You make everybody have to reveal their fears. So, but regardless, that's what you do. And so that would be the second part of that person's turn. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And so for just for the purposes of this, we'll say that that is not correct. But this is where one of the cool things happens is like, let's say like you, if you had the fear of flying, you could actually then, especially like, you know, early in the game, you could go ahead and put it on the Fear of Flying. And so what happens then is that you're telling the other players, well, I, I, I don't have the Fear of Flying in my hand, so I'm guessing you do. And so that's where that weird deduction and bluffing aspect of the game happens. So then, I mean, that's those, and this is, that's where, like, I really enjoy that part of the game. But we're not doing that, so we'll just go ahead and put that there. And then the last thing you see is it says, I have to put one of my own, again, on one of those places. So I once again look, and like we said, we have the fear of flying, so we're not going to put it there. And um, you know, we did, we put that on death, so that wouldn't be good. So we'll we'll go ahead and this is like the fear of barbecue. Who's going to be afraid of barbecue? But anyway, so mm, barbecue. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this and we'll put that on there like so. All right. So you've done that complete turn, you, you've taken that action, uh, you've placed your tokens, and now what you do is you count up the value of the tokens that you placed on the board, and now you can go ahead and place your ghosts on the board. And so uh, there's three movement points, and when you place your ghosts on the board, you have to start off in one of the halls, and you can just pick one. Now we've already said that like, Fear of flying is one of the cards that we have, um, but you know, so maybe we want to try to hide that or try to protect it. So we look and find the fear of flying. It's right here, and so we're going to go ahead and place our ghost there for one movement point. And then, as a second movement point, we're going to go ahead and take a ghost and we're going to place it right there. And so now we've moved a ghost onto there. We're 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 we're, we're halfway home to protecting it because as, if you have two ghosts on the fear like so like you know if if i had managed to get a, a second meeple there and say blue on their turn is able to place a token on my fear of flying like that that's not going to do anything because i have my ghosts protecting that fear and that nothing's going to happen so uh you know you have a situation where it's like so that's done and but unfortunately i can't do that and plus you can't on the on the, on the first like on the on, on your turn you can never put uh two ghosts onto the same spot um you know even if you have tons of movement points even if you have like 27 movement points you can't move it and also you have to use up your movement points too you can't have ever have any left over so regardless so we'll go ahead and since that was one and then two we're going to take our third movement point we're going to go like so and we're going to do that now, um, there's some different things about movement that you should know as far as your ghost go. You can't move, like, you can't go from here to here. You can't go from here to here. You have to go into the hall, and then you have to then go back in. And that's, so, uh, if you were, if you had a ghost here, and you wanted to, to get him uh, to the fear of insects, you'd have to leave, and then go like so. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, what if this person had two ghosts in there? What can I do? I can't, I can't. And do that. Well, actually, you can. What you can do is, if Blue is on a turn and they have movement points, they can go like this, and then they can move one of their ghosts in there, like so. And if they had enough movement points, 
they can go ahead and place another one. And then for the price of two instead of one, they can go ahead and move one in there and knock the ghost out and hand it back to the player. And if that case had happened that they had placed it on there, at that point, the this player would have to reveal that fear of flying and show that because of the fact that it no longer protected it. So one of the things about the game that you have to make sure you take care of is that if you have uh, people with tokens uh, on your board, you need to then start playing action cards like that are going to be, allow you to move that off there. So you notice like this action card is this symbol, which you'll see, and I, I hope you can see it, but it's right there. And so later on, they're going to play that card, they're going to take that symbol, and they're going to move it back, and they're going to place it over there. And maybe, hopefully, you can even cover up the, the fear that's over there that, you know, to, to start knocking blue out of, out of the board. So you can move other person's tokens that are on your, on your card, um, but you don't ever get any movement points or anything uh, for that. So if you do get your uh, your, your 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 fear revealed, um, each each fear, if you notice down there in the bottom, they they, they have like a kind of a bonus that uh, they give you. Um, that you know if you, because you you you've kind of gotten hurt or you've lost a fear, um, you get to go ahead and and you know take that bonus that's down on there and like the bonuses just kind of break the rules, allow you to draw a card, things like that. And so it's kind of like, well, okay, you, you had one of your three uh, fears revealed, but here's a little little extra. If you ever, to, to help you, and, you know, so you're not like beaten out of the game really quickly, it should be noted that um, if you ever have to, because of the fact that your cards just, the way the situation is, you have to place one. So like if you had, to, like the character had to put one on their own flying and have to reveal their own fear, you don't get that bonus. You, you just, well, that just stinks and you end up having to reveal your fear. Uh, the other thing is, is that if you reveal a fear, so like, let's say when we move this over here, that person actually had the fear of guns. You find the guns and you're actually going to flip this over. And I don't have the back art, so I do apologize, but like, and then what this does, this becomes another, um, uh, another hall, like these things. And so it's another venue for you to go ahead and place your meeples, one, and then two, and so on and so forth, like that. It's another venue for you to use to, to get on the board. This is important because you can actually use your ghosts as blockers. Because if you have, say, like, um, all these ghosts, like so, on the, the halls to get in if there is if this wasn't turned over to just get in on your turn you would have to actually uh you know like you say um red wanted to like, like actually let's take that off and put this one here say like red wanted to get in and put their ghosts down they would have to pay two movement points to actually like knock one off before they actually have to do that. So the ghosts actually work as blockers, obviously, and uh, can impede movement and also can be like have a little chain of protection uh, to protect, especially like if you were unlucky or and, and you had both like fear of trash and fear of water, you could go ahead and you'd put, be putting blockers. Now, it should be noted that you can only ever have one ghost on each one of those circles. So you can't put multiple ghosts down to like uh, super block something or anything like that. So uh, the game progresses, as I said, like you, you each turn, um, you'll be playing a card. And then at the end of your turn, um, after you play a card, you have the option of drawing another card from the draw pile, which you, know, you just draw the top card. Or you can, if you want, there's a second deck of cards, um, which are called adrenaline cards. And adrenaline cards are kind of like just super uh, whooped up cards that um, that kind of break the rules. You know, like like this card uh, that that allows you to to place instead of like um, instead of uh, uh, like these cards that have like these specific symbols. Um, you know, it has these multiple symbols in the bottom that you can use to to, to place a token. Or um, if you you know you didn't want uh, those. Uh, there's actually a card that allows you to um, place, or you do like it's called like the secret path card. I'm gonna find that for you. Just a moment. Of course, now I'm not gonna be able to find it. But there's a card called secret path that um, for every for every ghost uh, that's out in the hall, uh, you get two movement points per that. So you get like a ton of movement points if there's a lot of uh, different ghosts out there in the middle. However, if you want to draw one of the adrenaline cards, you actually have to use up one of your ghosts and take them out of the game. And so you're getting a card that's super powerful, but 
um, that allows you to break the rules, but it also uh, like it, it weakens you a little bit because of the fact that um, you're, you're giving up uh, one of your blockers, one of your 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 hunter seekers, if you will, that are out there trying to uh, uh, either protect your own investment or is out there trying uh, to actively uh, um, like knock out other people's defenses uh, so then they can uh, so then you can place your tokens and, and reveal that fear. It should be noted that um, if you do decide to draw an adrenaline card by giving out any of your ghosts, you can get that ghost back uh, whenever you reveal somebody else's Phobos card. It's kind of like uh, it's 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 not only do you get to uh, get one person sort of that much closer to being knocked out of the game, uh, but you actually get um, your your ghost back to be able to be put on the board. Um, other than that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the game. I mean, it's it's one of those things where the rules are really, really simple and are easy to, to figure out. And once you get the flow of the game, it's really good. Um, once you, your three Phobos cards are revealed, you can't win the game. Um, if you're playing a two-player game, obviously the game is just over because, you know, you're playing a two-player game. But if you're playing a three-player game or a four-player game, it, you aren't eliminated. Um, you still get to take your turns as normal. You still get to you know, play cards and move your ghosts and what have you, you become what's called a ghoul player. And so you can actually affect the game um, and, and actually try to knock the other players out. Um, but you can't win anymore. But um, this is one of those games that's like full of deduction and, 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 and table talk and what have you. And so um, it is kind of nice that like even if um, you, you, you got kind of beat up and battered and you didn't win the game, um, it is nice that you don't have to get up off the table. Uh, you can still stay in there and keep your fingers in the pie and you can still mess with people, which, you know, is what this game kind of is all about. So, well, there you go. That, that, that's that's how you play the game of Phobos. Um, and uh, let's just go ahead and I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think of it. Uh, and maybe somewhere along the way, you'll figure out if this is a game that uh, you yourself would like to add to your collection. Ooh. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, okay, there you go. Um, that's how you play Phobos. Thanks for sitting through that. And uh, we're back here to uh, what I think of the game. Well. For starters, um, I'm just going to kind of go off on a little bit of a uh, mini rant here, and um, as I'm kind of want to do. Uh, there are like tons of games out there now. I mean, like Essen like, just happened, and um, like hundreds upon hundreds of new games were thrust upon our, our wonderful hobby that we have. And um, it is nearly impossible uh i would say it's just impossible for anybody to have a truly innovative game anymore i mean there there definitely is games that like come out and they put a spin on an old uh uh design or or a a new way to look at a mechanic or something but for the most part i mean uh not that it's it isn't a been there done that kind of thing but um for me uh you know having a nice nice fun little theme added to a game really can make make the difference especially when you're you're you're, you're playing a game like phobos i mean phobos is is a um is a worker placement game it's an action point game it's it's um it's 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 a hand management game but you know it's taking all those mechanics and they're kind of interweaving them in, in its own special way and 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 I, I love the game. I mean, I love as far as like the the actual use of the cards. I, I love um, lots of things. I'll explain in just a moment. But um, the thing that I, I really like is that it's 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 actually a really really cool theme. It actually takes me back, and I'm not going to be able to remember because I'm old and I'm forgetting things. But um, there were there were several games in like the late '80s and early '90s that were um, that kind of played on this kind of uh, uh, mental, psychic, strife, haunting type thing. And, I, and I've and i played many of them, and I can't even think of names. But, I mean, um, there was a there was a role-playing game called Chill uh, many years ago. And, and I forget the name of the company that, that produced Chill. But um, they had a couple of board games that were very much um, like something like this. I got that same feel when I played this game. And um, I enjoy I enjoy the spooky theme. I enjoy that that uh, that haunted asylum uh, kind of idea. Now, I mean, do I really feel like I'm I'm like ooh, I'm finding out your fears? No, but I mean, 
I, I I dig it, and I like I said, if you go and look at how the miniatures are going to look and everything like that, this game looks wicked, and um, it's definitely it definitely adds uh, to the atmosphere of the game, and and plus it's like it's so cool to like have a theme that's like really not something that that's very fresh or new. It's like the theme is very. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, it's a train game. Uh, you know, oh, you know, it's it's a game about farming. Oh, it's you know, and so it's another co-op game about a disaster that we need to defeat. You know, and so, and, the, and not to say the games that have themes like that are bad. It's just it's just really nice to have somebody kind of branch off and do something new. But anyway, why do I like this game? Um, you know, basically it all comes down to the human element for me. And I love deduction games, I love bluffing games, I love matching my wits against the person across the table from me. And the thing about it is, is that these games are, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the mechanics or, or what have you aren't exactly like um, anything brand new by any means. I mean, they, I feel like they do kind of weave together in, in very cool, innovative ways. But, um, you know, but I, I it's, it's the... It's the actual me against you mentality. Like, is he putting his ghosts over there on the fear of clowns because he's like really protecting the fear of clowns, or he's gonna trying to make me think that I want to do the fear of clowns? So he's I, he's actually afraid of flying, and that's what he's trying to protect. You know, is he placing that token there because he really? Th thinks that's what I have, or maybe he has it behind him, and it's so there's that wonderful think, double think, bluff, double bluff thing going on constantly, and and there's a lot of um, remembering, like, where did he place that token, where did she move that ghost, where did they start with, and so you have that, like, those tumblers and those, those things clicking in your head, and the gears start rolling, and then you start making educated guesses, and then, so it's, it's you know, it's like any good deduction game, it's like, I think it's this! Oh, it isn't? All right, so you're not that, and I gotta remember that. Now let's go ahead and go over here, you know? And I, and, and at the same time, you're trying to gather that information, but you're also trying to, like, push the information away from you to, like, try to obfuscate what you have and, and try to prevent it. And that's, that's where the game shines for me. You know, I mean, it, the game itself, you know, it would be fun just with the movement and the playing the action points and everything like that. And I, you know, and I, and I dig it for that reason. But add that human element, add that, that wonderful, um, you know, kind of head-to-head, you know, adversarial game I mean, it's like it seems like every single like every other game i play now is very very like you tend your garden and i'll tend my garden we'll see whose garden is the best at the end not that those games are bad but every once in a while i like to be able to just go after somebody and win because i knocked you out of the game not because i got a prettier fountain than you but anyway so there you go Phobos. Um, I always try to say, like, if you like games like this, then you, maybe you like this game. If you like games that have a really, really cool theme um, tied in with some really co cool components, like I said, go check those out. They're awesome. And, like, a conflict-driven game full of deduction and bluffing, I think this game is something that's going to be right up your alley. It's going to be right up your game, gaming friend's alley, and it, you definitely want to put it on your uh, your own gaming dojo shelf. Uh, and, and so, go ahead, go back uh, back the Kickstarter, and uh, and and you know give them some love. And so then, when the game gets published, you'll go ahead and you'll have your very own copy to to, to play uh, with your buddies. So there you go. Um, as always, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I greatly appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can obviously post them below and I will answer those to the best of my ability. And I'm sure the designer and the publisher will be more than happy to pipe in if you have any questions as well. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, until next time, uh, this was Undead Viking. You have an awesome day. Bye-bye now.